Humans have always loved folding and bending stuff. It wasn't long after the invention of paper that people began folding it, and as a result, the tradition of origami became a hallmark of Eastern culture. Without folding, we wouldn't have greetings cards or books. And where would we be without books? Reading scrolls on a beach? Wildly impractical. Technology, though, has had an on-again, off-again relationship with folding devices for decades. But only recently has one critical roadblock finally been overcome. The foldable screen. To understand the significance of this, we need to take a trip back to the land of pastel sweaters and Concord, the 1980s. One of the most important early foldable devices was the Grid Compass, released in the early 1980s. It was a precursor to all modern laptops and featured the widely accepted design of a screen on half of the unit, a keyboard on another half, and a mechanical hinge in the middle that let it fold and become more conveniently portable. Early palm-top computers took this thinking further in the 1990s with companies like Scion shrinking laptop-like functionality down into products like the Series 5 and the Series 3. But they were always niche products confined to business use and enthusiasts like me. I had a Scion 3MX and it's one of my all-time favourite creations along with the iPad, electric drum kits and Sir David Attenborough. But when many people think back to their first experience of a folding device, it's often a mobile phone, and more often than not, it's specifically the Motorola StarTac in 1996. It cost a thousand pounds at the time of release, making it as costly then as today's iPhones are, even accounting for inflation. It was amazing though. Not only was the concept novel, but it worked really, really well. You could use it with one hand. It wouldn't bulge out of your pocket like the traditional brick phones. And popular lore suggests its design was directly inspired by the tricorders used in Star Trek. Years of increasingly advanced flip phones appeared, some with built-in TV tuners and top screens that rotated to look more like a widescreen television set. But they still basically stuck to the old 1980s laptop design of screen on top, buttons on bottom, hinge dividing the two. In the 2000s, Nintendo's DS console began to move the needle outside of the world of mobile phones. Not only did it fold in half, but the bottom part of the device featured an additional screen. It was wildly successful and directly informed the design of many future dual screen devices, some of which are still being designed today, and we'll get to those shortly. After Apple popularized the modern design of a consumer tablet computer in 2010 with the first iPad, the industry started thinking again about combining the power of using a screen instead of a keyboard with the genuine usefulness of a product you could make more portable by folding it in half. But for years, the biggest hurdle was that LCD screens, the, the thing in a product that lights up to show you a picture of a keyboard or a picture of a picture or whatever else a device needs to display, is wildly inflexible. They have too many components, not least a huge backlight underneath with millions of tiny pixels on top. And it wasn't until organic LEDs or OLEDs, which don't need backlights, became more viably affordable that companies like Samsung and Huawei and Royal and others started being able to innovate them into folding phones. Early iterations were plagued with either easily broken screens and hinges or eye-watering price points, and typically both. But the proof that the technology at least worked meant that software makers and consumers alike could begin to see why a folding screen may be useful. The best illustration of this today is comparing the Huawei Mate X, released a year or so ago, with Microsoft's Surface Duo, released this summer, and which borrows from the Nintendo DS school of thinking in that it utilizes two separate displays and a physical hinge to connect them. The Surface is a compact device that you can read on and type on and enjoy media on, but it's not going to replace a smartphone because even folded up, it's still too large as a result of the hinge and the physical space between the two separate screens. The Huawei Mate X, on the other hand, and to a similar extent, the most recent Galaxy Fold from Samsung, can absolutely be used as a regular mobile phone with app design principles we're all used to, but also fold out into a small tablet computer just as convenient to read on or watch a movie on as a small iPad or an Amazon Kindle. 
In a decade, I'll undoubtedly make another video in which I trace the origin of whatever 2030 smart devices are back via the Matex and the Galaxy Fold and make some sarcastic observation about how primitive and expensive they were. Uh, but as a note to myself, it'll be important to realize that at least on a purely technical level, these are examples of industrial design that sit in a novel class of their own. Between the laptops of the 1980s and today, almost every clamshell product, whether computer or phone or games console, followed the same philosophy of thing on top, different thing on bottom, but now that physical restriction has been innovated away. And the last time I can recall commenting on a creation of a product that innovated a piece of hardware design away, it was Steve Jobs killing physical keyboards with the iPhone. And look where that took us. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? It won't matter if today's folding phones die a death. The fact that it's possible for them to exist at all is what's different, and that's something that makes me very excited, like my Scion 3MX did, and Sir David Attenborough's voice still does. For Quick Take in London, I'm Nate Langson. What's your favourite folding thing? Let me know.